has come. It is not that God had forgotten you. God will never forget you or forsake. He remembers the labor of your hands and the gift and the blessing that you have given. Now, one of the first things that the enemy does, we will try to uh, snatch out. Satan will always try to remove joy. Let me tell you, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy is one of the fruits of the spirit that you need to guard with all your effort and your, all your life. Why? When joy goes, sorrows come. And when sorrows come, then you start experiencing a lot of negativity in your life. We must be joyous in season and out of season. We must praise God in season and out of season. It's not, it's not, it's not only when we are, we are happy that we can praise, we can praise in the midst of difficulty. And show cause that, Lord, it is not, it is not that I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of the challenges I have a God. Remember, God said, the, the battle is not yours. The sicknesses we go through, God will see us off, depending on our courage. How courageous are you to overcome that challenge? How courageous are you to take God on his word? How courageous are you to bring the presence of God in your situation? That is why when the disciples saw the victory of Jesus, they told him, Master, teach us to pray. And he said to them, our Father who art in heaven. That means he never said God in heaven. He said our Father. Because a Father has a relationship. A Father has a human heart. A Father has a feeling. A Father has a passion for his children. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Enforce the kingdom of God to your situation. When you are in your situation, bring the kingdom of God. And that is why Jesus said to his disciples in, in Matthew chapter 10 verses 1 to through 6, he said, when you go out, I'm sending you among wolves and among people who do not understand this mission. And when you go, declare to them, the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God has come. Everywhere you go, declare the kingdom. That is a message that he gives us. Even today, you need to declare, even in your office, the kingdom of God is in my office. And when you declare the kingdom of God, you are saying again, let the kingdom of God operate within my environment. And number two, he said to them, it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Enforce the will of God, not your will. Not thy will, thy will be done, not my will. Enforce the will of God. What is the will of God in that company? What is the will of God in that business? What is the will of God in that marriage? Let the will of God be done. And not your will. Are you with me? So the, the most important thing that you need to guard is joy. That you can, joy is the best fruit that you can protect in your life. You can be joyous. You can smile. Even when you have lost a loved one. Why? Our hope is not in the things our hope is in the Lord. Your hope is not in your car. Your hope is not in your husband. Your hope is not in the, in the, in the things that you have. It's in the Lord. Who is the giver of the things you have. So our, take your hope from the things. And put your hope in the Lord our God. And when your hope is hidden in the Lord. Then nothing shall challenge you. That is why you find that when God saw the faith of Enoch. In Genesis chapter 5. He came for him. And they talked. And the Bible tells us that Enoch was not afraid of any circumstance. He overcame every challenge. He stood in every occasion. Even when God has cast his father to be a vagabond, he was moving from here. He said to this young man, I say that nothing can shake you. He said, I believe in you. And the Bible said they talked. And what, is, what they talk is never recorded. When God was leaving in the evening, they left together. He went with God because of his faith. And I want to tell you today, in the challenges that are coming in the world, in the challenges that are coming in our economy, you need to trust in the Lord. Our hope is not on the things, it's on the, on the giver. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, let's quickly... I get some of the scriptures, Jehemiah, Nehemiah 8. It tells us that he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those who, whom nothing is prepared. For this day is a, 
is a holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He says, go and help people. Go and do things. Go and scatter. Because let me tell you, for you to receive, the principle of receiving is the principle of scattering. In other words, if you are not a giver, you are not a receiver. It's the principle of God. Unless you are a giver, then you cannot receive. It's a principle that works. Oh, I don't have anything to give. Yes, you have, any, you have everything that you can give. If you, if you look at your life and ever be a giver, then you shall always be a receiver. There is nothing like receiving without giving. It's a principle. It's a principle that you cannot receive and not give. Because anybody that receives uh, the oxygen must give out the carbon dioxide. And the trees gives out, receive the carbon dioxide and gives out oxygen. So giving is living. Giving is living. Jesus says in John 3.16, he said, I gave my only begotten son. Because I love the world. I love the world so much that I gave. There is no marriage without giving. No marriage without giving. I'm telling you, any marriage. The problems we have in our marriages is because we stop giving. If everybody will go back and start giving to their wife spontaneously, then you find their marriage is coming out. A dead marriage is a marriage that has nothing, no giving inside. You cannot deposit and withdraw without, you cannot withdraw without deposit. You cannot keep saying, oh, I love you. James said, words without action are dead. You must believe. One has to sana. Now remember, in Philippians 4.4, 4, Philippians 4.4, 4, let's go to scripture, through 7, Philippians 4.4 4 through 7, uh, the Bible tells us, rejoice in the Lord again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Let your gentleness be known on all men that the Lord is at hand. <laughs> Verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in, by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. So you can only present your request when you are in your supplication, you understand a giving. Giving. And go back to verses 5, verse 6. Look at those principal, principles. He says, don't be anxious for nothing, but everything in what? Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So again, thanksgiving is very key. Number seven. Number seven. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall, shall guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So again, it is important to rejoice in the Lord. Don't rejoice because things are good. Rejoice in the Lord. My rejoicing is in the Lord. My rejoicing in the Lord. Let me tell you, greatness is fought for and, is, uh, and, and it, is, it is made, you make yourself great by your actions and by saying, what you say, you become. Somebody say, well, my life is um, the same. My life is not improving. My life is remaining stagnant, stagnated. It is stagnated because of the words you speak. Words make your life. What you speak today will make your tomorrow. So you are careful in what you are saying. Because what you say determines who you become. You, you must. And if you want to become great, practice to be great. And greatness shall locate you. Practice to be great. Uh, you know, I, when people were going for politics, all politicians, some of them go to the school of communication on how to express themselves to the crowd, how to speak better, how to present his, his points, how to, how to convince people. He practices to become great. And he works great. He may not be great, but he looks great. Wakikuja wanasema, wei shimiwa wamefika. Wei shimiwa wamekuja. Na wanakuja wamefua suti vizuri. Wawanekane wei shimiwa. Hata kama wajagua, muta wachagua kwa wei shimiwa. If you want to be great, for your greatness. 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. Now, sometimes we are faced with temptations. There are temptations we go through. There are challenges we go through. There are difficulties that we face every day. The Bible says, no temptation. Read with me. No temptation shall I hear your voice. No temptation has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God is faithful. 
He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make the way to escape that you may be able to bear it. No temptation. And the Bible says temptations are common to man. Common to man. So what you are going through will not kill you. It will improve you. Everything I have ever gone through in this life has made me better. If you resist the challenges that we, we face every day, then you will never improve. God will always bring challenges. And the reason is that you may increase your mind. Makes, believe me, if you went through something successfully, and find somebody else going through, you feel you need to encourage him because you went through it and you, you've seen success in it. You will tell him, my brother, this is done. This and this, go through it. And you can even clap for him. Come on, come on, go through it. And you'll succeed. Challenges has made us better, not bitter. We become better. And the reason why we are crying and being discombobulated because of the challenges we go through is because we, we want to depend on our strength. You depend on your strength, your money, your strength, you, who you know. Let me tell you, none of that shall work. None of that shall remove the challenges we go through. Only God, them that depend on God, them that depend on their God shall be strong and they shall make exploits. Then them believe in their God, believe in their God, depend on their God, shall be strong and shall do exploits. I'm telling you, it is not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Anything you go through, let me tell you, God will never ask, oh, what is happening to Nyambura's house? What is happening to Otienos? What is happening? No, he knows. And everything is programmed for you to take over. That is why promotion comes after we overcome the exam. When you win an exam and pass the exam, you are promoted to the next level. And therefore in life, we must be promoted to the next level when we win the, the demons on their low level. Every style of life have challenges. And I tell people, even in your age, there were enemies at 20s. The enemies of 20s are different from the enemies of 30s. And the enemies of 30s to 40 are different from 40 to 50. And the enemies of 30 to 50 are different from 50 to 60. The enemies of 60 to 70 are different. These are levels. And you've got to keep winning. Winning these levels. And mature. In James chapter 1 verse 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verses 1. Let's look at the scripture. James verses 2. Go to verses 2. Begin from verse 2. Read with me. My brothers, my brethren. Count it a joy. When you fall into various trials. Uh-huh. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let the patient have its perfect work. That you may be perfect. Can you give us from NIV translation? I think that brings, brings what I need to tell you. NIV translation. NIV translation. He said, consider it a pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Verse 3. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Uh -huh. Perseverance must finish its work so that what? You may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So the challenge we, we go through, we must overcome them. In the name of Jesus, I shall overcome. In the name of Jesus, I shall make it. And it makes us take decisions. There are people that are unable to make decisions. There are people that are unable to say no. There are people that are unable to say yes. But when challenges come, it forces you to say no. Because when you say the challenge, you say no. You face the challenge, you say yes. You take opportunities. Praise the name of the Lord. Very important. No temptation that says us that you cannot overcome. Every temptation you can overcome. Any challenge you can overcome. And therefore, I pray. You know, there are people who are saying, oh God, remove all these problems. Let me tell you, problems are good for your maturity. And the problems are good because they, they give you money. Let me ask you, all of you here, who is earning money 
if not the problems you are solving. Ni nani ameandikwa ameandikwa kazi kama sio shida ndatatua. Kila mtu ako hapa ameandikwa kazi kwa kampuni kutatua shida fulani. Eh? Unanielewa? Umeandikwa kutatua shida. Ukia ukita house girl ama house help amekuja kwako akuji kwa kula raha anakuja kukutatulia shida ambazo uziwezi unaandika hawezi muandika hata wewe umeandikwa kwa hiyo unapomwambia Mungu niondolee shida ni kusema umefutwa kazi unaambia Mungu nifute kazi utakula nini eh shida ni mzuri inatuweka inatuweka discipline na inatuonesha njia za kwenda na ku make decisions that are sober wengine tumezaliwa wachoyo Ukisikia wageni wamekuja unaficha chakula chini ya meza. Alafu unapanguza mdomo unasema jamani hapa nimekauka. Na harufu imejaa kwa nyumba imekustaki. Sasa Mungu anasema kuonyeshe kulala njaa ili ujue uchungu wa kulala njaa ili siku nyingine usifiche. Wewe ni mchoyo hupeni pesa. Mtu anakuomba nisaidie niko na mtoto una pesa na unataka kumsaidia mtu. Especially wa Kristo ni wacho sana. Ukienda kwa Mkristo kuomba anakuambia ndugu dada yangu wacha tuombe. Biblia inatuambia wacha maombi si maombi. Kuna wakati wa maombi na John third John. Anasema kuna wakati wa maombi na kuna wakati sio maombi. Na unataka kuomba. I think first John 3:15. Hebu jaribu hiyo. First John 3:15. First John 3:15. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that uh, that no murderers have eternal life in him. Verse 16. Go to 16. This is how we know the love that uh, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay our lives down for our brothers. Verse 17. Anyone who has material possession. I love that. That's what I'm talking about. Anyone who has material possession and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him. How can the love of God be in him. How? Mungu anakuangalia, mtu amekuomba pesa unayo na umpeani. Ana wewe ngojea the next mtiani mpaka upite. So utalia ukilia na uchungu, mtu akija siku nyingine utampa yote. Utampa yote. Kwa hivyo ni mitiani tunapita. Bwana asifiwe sana. Mitiani. Psalms, let's go to restoration. Hii mwezi wa sita tulisema is our month of restoration. And I beg every one of us, you need to take time to pray that God restore my life. Maana, tunawapatia neno la mungu la mwezi, o unafikiri tunacheza. Kuna watu wanarekua restore, watu wanarejisha, mungu wanarejisha, anarejisha miaka ulio haribu. Wengine wetu tuliaribu miaka, saisi tunapigio kengele. Eh? Ama ujajua wewe, we, 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 ata wewe kwa kama mimi, unapigio kengele, miaka imeenda, hakuna kitu ukonayo. Mano unafikirie kwamba you tutaishi forever. How many years do we live? 70 years according which scripture is that? Psalms 90 verses 10. Ebu tupati yo scripture. The length of our days. Sema soma na mimi. Dio uangalie. The length of our days is 70 years. Or if we have yet their span is what? Trouble, sorrows. And quickly we pass away. So kifika eight in a span of trouble, sorrows, and quickly pass away. Yu ni miaka ya, yu ni miaka ya unangwaja tu kama umepatio neema. Ya kuona wajuku vitu kuu na kuwabariki ukiendanga. Sisoni yako imeisha. Kama tuna 70 years. How many hours do we sleep every day? Muna lalanga masa mangapi? Ama unafa kulala masa mangapi? Na wengine ata mulali yo masa so unataka na uje utukusaidie. Eh? Masa nane. Kama unalala 8 hours a day. You do that mathematics by 70 years. How many years do you sleep? 5 years. So my chayako. Kwa 70 years. Mungu wa kukupia. Production. You are not producing. Now if you sleep 25 years out of 70. 
ikiwa unabakisha 45 na umearibu zingine kwa shule how many years do you go to school umeenda mpaka university umefanya first degree una, umetumia miaka ngapi yeah fanya hesabu yako muniambie unapatiwa last rap na bado unafanya mchezo na maisha haya hii maisha hakuna we have no time bado utaenda kusema mimi naenda kwa fulani wacha mshene wacha mamaneno hatuna time hatuna time umejenga nyumba huja enjoy bado unahangaika umenunua gari huja enjoy bado unahangaika si enjoy una mke huja enjoy si enjoy na ukifa hakuna kuolewa Binguni ya kuoni hapa mambo ya hapa ikiisha imeisha binguni hakuna kwa na hakuna kusema oh my love you know hakuna mapenzi itarudio binguni inaishia hapa huko mtakutana kama brother and sister opportunity ilikuwa hapa oh i don't like my i don't like my wife when you will ever like her na huko katika hiyo ndoa my friend go home and think twice and tell god remove every ego remove every pride give me the heart of humility that and meekness that i may enjoy and uje enjoy kuna watu wana enjoy kenya wanaenda mombasa kuogelea wiki moja wanaenda lekturkana kwa hot spring wamesoma wameenda lord wameenda masaimara kwa uh, balloon safaris wewe utawahi lienda lini hebu uliza jirani yako uliza jirani yako utawahi enda lini Yaani utangana kufanya kazi miaka yako yote mpaka ukukauke na ukufe ukifanya kazi. Unahitaji kukombolewa. Hivi tu na Mungu amesema nimewapa kila kitu. Ya hayakuji kwa nguvu zako. Hayakuji kwa uwezo wako ni Mungu anapeana. Na wewe unasahau Mungu anapeana. Unasema hata leo sikuje maombi ninaenda kufanya vitu. Mungu asaidie. May God help you. Na anasema, oh, let me, can I give you scripture so that you don't it's not my word. Isaiah 58:13. Isaiah 58:13. I hope that is a scripture. Give us a scripture. Now, he says, if you keep your feet from breaking the sabbath. Sabbath ni Jumapili. If you keep your feet from breaking the sabbath, from doing as you please, on my holy day if you call my sabbath a delight and the lord's holy day a honorable and if you honor if you honor it by not going on your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words what happened verse 14 then you will find what you will find joy in the lord and i will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father jacob the mouth of the lord has spoken for you to be a shaker and a mover in kenya honor god kwa nini muislamu anafunga saa saba anakuacha unamwambia niko na milioni moja anakuambia ngoja niende msikiti dakika 15 nitarudi unamwambia sasa hii pesa nakwambia kama uwezi nunua hapa enda duka nyingine mimi naenda msikiti na anafunga anakuacha na pesa yako kama ni wewe unasema bwana amenitembelea wacha ni postpone kanisa okay hizi pesa ni value the value you've given god kama value yako kama wewe unadhamini pesa kuliko mungu you are a lost yeye yeah, ana value mungu anajua ule mungu akienda kuomba 15 minutes ameomba vizuri atarudi kama ukienda ataleta mwingine lakini wewe unafikiri pesa ikienda maana huelewi nani amelete uona habari na you, you are very ignorant ule Mungu alimlete atalete mara kumi. Kama kama kazi yake itafungwa haiwezi let me tell you haiwezi kufungwa. Wale una ukimheshimu Mungu na kumpenda huyu Mungu utajiri utapeleka wapi? Kungangana kwetu 
ni kwa sababu ya kukosa value atudhamini Mungu aliyetubariki atudhamini Mungu tunaye muamini unajua kuita bwana oh jehova oh nikumbuke anakukumbuka wapi na wewe unamkumbukanga ukipatia promotion mara ya mwisho kuja kanisani au unasema sasa nimekuwa mkubwa unasema church understand we are now the senators we are the big men i'm the ceo i cannot find time to come to church pray we pray for me you are a foolish wicked man foolish person who can watu wa mungu kanisa la nigeria bishop adeboe eh dagote ni mzee wa kanisa na yeye ni project manager wa kanisa la bishop adeboe hakuna siku mimi nimesoma hata leo google uangalie yeye ni mzee wa kanisa wa project hakuna siku ametoka kanisani kwa sababu is the richest man in africa ana property africa nzima na ngambo ana utajiri na magika lakini ananyenyekea kwa mtumishi wa Mungu. Mbona yeye mbona yeye aseme ah mimi nina pesa mingi ah sikuji asikuji church. Anazidi kuongezeka maana ako chini ya anointing ya prophet. The richest woman in Africa ni Asha kwa mlango kwa kanisa la Adeboe. Wa mama anamwambia mama si ukae tu kutumikie maana wewe ndio the real akamwambia we mimi lazima yeye anafagianga kanisa anasafisha kanisa na wengine anaasha uh, kila jumapili for the last her life according to the story that i've read she ashes ili utajiri anayo watu wanamwambia wewe na wewe umepata umeandikwa na serikali ya Kenya umepata 1 million kichwa imeharibika hata ukuji fellowship ukumbuki ukumbuki ya kufanya mimi nawaambia atafuta huyu Mungu anakubariki anakutest anasema it's a, it's a drop don't change your lifestyle don't change your lifestyle sindi kumpenda Mungu na atakupa zaidi maana zote anasema promotion from Psalm 75 does not come from the east or from the west it come from the, the Lord good things according to James chapter 1 verse 7 i think James 1:17 anasema good things eh? good things give, give the scriptures angalia every good and perfect gift is from above coming from the father of the heavenly light who does not change like a shifting shadow good things come from above ukipata gari mpya unamtumikia Mungu zaidi ukipata mke unamtumikia Mungu zaidi ukipata watoto tumikia Mungu zaidi wengine hata mnawaacha kuimba wale wa mama walizaa waliwacha kanisa wakaacha kuwa ashers wakaacha kuomba Mungu kwa sababu wamepata watoto Shimon you no wonder you are in trouble You need to you kusiacha Mungu hata upate nini bado utamshika umwambie Mungu niko na wewe ni niwe nayo ni siwe nayo si kuabudu kwa sababu ya vitu si kuabudu kwa sababu na gari si kuabudu kwa sababu na nyumba si kuabudu kwa sababu mimi ni president na kutafuta Mungu na kuomba nionekanie There's a difference. I'm telling you, there's a difference. Na mtu anayetafuta Mungu na mwenye anacheza na maisha yake kwa sababu ako nayo. I pray that today you will look after God and even if everything goes, you'll say Lord, take everything, but I shall not do not take your present. That in Psalms 51, go to Psalm 51. Psalms 51. God bless you, mommy. Psalms 51. He says half mercy oh god according to your unfailing love according to your great compassion blot out my transgression verses 2 wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for i know my transgression and my sin is always before you uh-huh. against you lord have i committed sin and and what is evil So you you need you need to keep praying you can need to to keep God and 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 follow him and talk to him because he's the he's the one he's the only God go to verses 5 go to verses 5 surely i was sinful sin bath now can i tell you something here do you know it is it is normal for people to be disobedient it is abnormal for people to be obedient Did you ever know that? It is normal. 
ukiza mtoto when you give birth to a child when the first thing they learn is wickedness because the wickedness is engrafted in their system mtoto anafanya kila siku unaambia hey 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 don't do don't don't do this mpaka atakata wakati mwingine anaumwa mama yake ile matiti ananyonya anauma na anaangalia mama yake ukimwambia no stop anauma tena na anakuangalia tena mpaka umchape umkatase kufanya hizo vitu kwa sababu ukionesha mtoto mazuri ni rahisi ni gani rahisi kufanya mabaya na wewe je ni gani rahisi kufanya it is normal to sin it is abnormal not to sin know that it is easy for people to do sin but it is not normal and very hard to remain holy leo and now if makanisa yale tunaona leo kuna strip churches kuna makanisa ya watu wanatoa nguo ukienda kanisani asubuhi watu wanaingia pale maandaki mnatoa nguo zote mnakaa usiku na watu wamejaa imekufashion lakini kanisa watu wanaelezea ukweli ah hiyo 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 ya hiyo anasamanga hiyo bishop kamaro ya ku declare na ku hiyo ah, kanisa ni ngumu sana hiyo makanisa ya ku declare vitu hapana ah, wacha twende mahali ambapo Eh, hivyo ndio watu wanapenda. Bwana asifiwe sana. Nimalizie kwa kuwa, kusema hivi. Mwezi huu Mungu atakukumbuka. Kama Mungu alikumbuka, mefi, nilikuwa nasoma story ya Mephibosheth from the second Samuel. Go to second Samuel quickly. Let me just in a few few minutes let me just summarize. Mephibosheth. Second Samuel, two verses second Samuel chapter 9. Two verses 9. Two nine. Second Samuel. 92 My friend 92 hapo Now the servant of Saul's house Ah una, unaona kulikuwa na watoto wa Saul mtoto wa Jonathan na nyumba ya Sauli ilisaulika kwa miaka mingi Lakini David akakumbuka Now the uh, give us from verses 1 from verses 1 David asked is there anyone left uh, at the house of Saul whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake. And now he, and there, there was a servant uh, souls of Saul's house named Ziba. They called him to appear before David. And King David said to him, Are you Ziba? Uh, your servant, he replied. This the king asked, Is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, uh, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled. Na angalia, anaambia huyu ni mlemavu. Ulemavu inaweza kuwa wewe ni maskini, wewe ni kiwete, huna vitu. And where is he? He asked the king. Ziba answered and he said, he is in the house of Makir of Amiel in Lodeba. Yaani huyu jamaa alitupwa mbali mali ya baba, babu yake, ya baba yake, watu wengine ndio wanaenjoy. And King David had him brought before from Lodeba. And the house of Makir, the son of Amiel. Lord Eba ni mahali pa kusaulika. It's a place of forgetfulness, a place of backwardness, a place of poverty, it's a place of, of, of sickness. Yeah? A place of failure. Lord Eba. If you Google and you find out, go to the dictionary, you find out Lord Eba is, is, is a very bad place. Maybe some of us are, are from those places. Your village from where you come from, you've been forgotten. Your village from your, where you come from. Maybe you are crippled. They are giving example. But David said, bring him out. For his time of remembrance has come. No matter his condition, I shall show favor. He shall eat my table all through his life. And I shall restore back what his father had. I pray, may this be your month of restoration. No matter your situation. Whether you are crippled or not, financially or, sick, or in my sickness, you shall be restored. Of restoration in the name of Jesus.